All right, everybody. Eric here again. Today, I want to talk about startups. The amazing, sexy startup world that everybody wants to be in and that you see on TV with the Mark Zuckerberg movies or the Elon Musk stuff. Let's, let's talk about the reality. So please like, share, subscribe, comment. Let's talk. Let's, you know, please kind of get it out there because uh, these things excite me. I hope they excite you. And the only way to talk about it and drum up more talk is to share it and subscribe it and like it. All right, let me start with the topic that happened uh, this past week. Elon Musk went on a startup called Clubhouse, which is basically Twitter for audio, and said, start doing a startup is like eating glass and staring at an abyss. Threshold. And there's a friend of mine who, who says like starting companies like staring into the abyss and, and eating glass. Um, and there's some truth to that. <laughs> um, the staring into the abyss part is that you're going to be constantly facing the, the um, extermination of the company. Because uh, most, most startups fail. Uh, it's like 90%, arguably 99% of, of startups fail. So, uh, so, so you, you, that, that's the staring into the abyss part. You're constantly saying, okay, this, if, if, if I don't get this right, the company will die. Um, it should be quite stressful. Quite stressful. And, and then um, the eating glass part is you've got, you've got to do You've got to do the problems. You've got to, you've got to work on the problems that the company needs you to work on, not the problems you want to work on. And, and so that, that, that's, you end up working on problems that, that uh, you'd really wish you weren't working on. And so that's, that's the eating glass part. Um, and that goes on for a long time. So how do you... That doesn't look like the Mark Zuckerberg movie that I watched. So what's the deal? I, you know, a little bit of background for those that don't know. I have had about five startups and they've all been very different experiences. And when I first doing, started doing startups 20 years ago, they weren't sexy and they weren't exciting. It was, hey, you're starting a business, good luck. And I remember my parents always used to say, when are you gonna stop doing that and get a real job? So where did all this glorious startup stuff come from? And Elon Musk sure isn't saying it's glorious. So let's kind of explore what what is a startup and what's the deal? So first of all, a startup really is any business. Really, it's any any business. It's a business that somebody hasn't really done before, whether it's that location, that technology, that approach. I mean, that's a startup. If you are buying an existing business or are you building the exact same business right next door to somebody who's done it before, not really a startup. A startup is trying something new and making money while doing it. And so let's let's dig into it. So startups aren't that sexy like in the movies. They aren't that exciting. It is a lot of grind to the whole thing. There's a lot of long hours. And you'll hear people say, oh, when you're doing a startup, you're going to work 18 hours a day. It's kind of true. The deal is with a startup, you're always short money. And no matter how much you raise, it's going to take 10 times longer than you think. It's going to cost 10 times more than you think. And it's going to be 10 times more difficult. And you're not going to have people around to do everything for you. And as the founder, you have to pick up that slack. So if you have to do nobody to do QuickBooks or accounting within your startup, you're doing it at 1030 at night when your phone is not ringing with customers or ideas or staff. If there is nobody to take out the trash. You are doing that at 1035 at night because that's what you do is you've got to pick up the slack. And there's, you know, when you set a budget and projections in, in these startups, most of these things, especially look at Elon Musk, the sky's the limit, literally, like with Starlink and, and SpaceX. He probably, when he started, didn't think it was going to take 10 to 15 years to start getting the first ships into space, right? or that it was going to be 15 years before Tesla really had its production going and, and was really making a dent in market share. These things take time. Not only do you have to refine the technologies and the process, you have to convince the general public that this new idea is a better way than doing things the old idea. 
And sometimes they're excited. I know a lot of people that are excited about Tesla. Doesn't mean they're going out and buying one. They're cautious. They're like, well, wait a minute. What if it breaks? Where's the closest dealer? What if I run out of a charge? I mean, there's lots of doubts in people's heads. And I know it's starting to sound like I'm discouraging people from startups. This is what is so amazing. And I'm not. But this is what is so amazing about this country. And you can't do it anywhere else. Is even though the odds are against you, I think most most businesses, I think it's like 70%, it could be a little bit lower, go out of business within the first three years, three to five years. If you succeed, you can take a company with a couple of dollars to a multi-billion dollar company. Not saying that's all, all of what happened. There's a good chunk in between that just become good companies that make really good money and they do a good profit and they create a good business. I can The, the list out there can go on. Not the odds of having a startup that looks like, uh, you know, Facebook or Twitter or Tesla, the odds are against you. But there are so many good ideas. And even if you can get it somewhat to market or get some people to use your product, there's a good chance that a bigger company that's well funded will come in and buy you and help you take it to the next level. That is the startup dreams that we have here. Those are the realities that are out there. And there are what's called angel investors out there that will help you through this. There are venture capital funds and investors at a big level that like good ideas that want to jump on board. And it may not make financial sense for them. But the future and possibilities, you look at some of these public companies, what they're trading at, 150, 1,000 times revenue. That's what the startup world works at. If you're making zero, you've got to have a faith and, and persistence and, and, and be able to push through. So let's, let's talk about some of the finer things. What you need to be a successful startup. And first of all, it's a solid team. It, you, you need people that are going to live and breathe a product and put their thoughts and their mind share and feel like they own it. Or not just a product, a technology, a business, a service. All the way up, management, you know, people on the people answering the phones. Everybody needs to feel like they have built something because that's what you're doing. Generally, the pay is not great for these people. They're looking at the dream, the hey, what if it gets bought? Maybe I've got some shares in the company. Maybe you know it goes big, and you know I can put this on my resume. I mean, they're looking at the massive upside and empowering them to own and feel like they own this company and that they're just as invested because they should be and they are in most cases. That's going to win. Trying to keep 100% of the company to yourself is foolish and it's not going to get you very far. You need people. You cannot do this on your own. And that takes me to point number two. Point number two is you need good advisors. And a lot of times those advisors are investors and they will help you. Their money you may think is important, but their advice and their skill sets are far more important than their money. And you've got to rely on them. You've got to stock your board with them. You've got to listen to them. Uh, not always. Sometimes it's good to have a strong opinion. But they're there to help you. And a lot of startups I see start up, they start fighting their investors and their board. And it's like, why, why did you bring on people that want to help you to fight them? And, uh, and, and so that's so important. Lean on them. Utilize them. They've got experience. And if they don't, and then you've got the wrong people part of your company there. Um, and then the third is, is really going to be founding team. And whether that's uh, one person or two people together, co-founders, you're going to be slaves. You're not going to make very good. You're going to sleep very poorly. You're going to damage your health. You're going to sacrifice your time. You are going to give it all to make it work. And the second you stop is when it stops. Unfortunately, I mean, that's that's really the deal. I've seen some really, really good companies, and when their founder gets burnt out, then the the company dies. It's just it's it's a sad thing, but it's true. Uh, so those are the three big components when we talk about startups to, to to success. There are so many other factors. I always say timing is absolutely everything. Uh, it's good to be early to market because it gives you time to learn, but it's really bad to be timing the market right at time because it doesn't give you a, a chance to learn and you know uh, you could miss the market by the time you learn and, and do those kind of things so early is not always bad but then you've got to make sure you manage your cash flow cash flow cash flow and i, and I want to point that out because my board's always like how do you manage the cash flow so strictly it's, you have to 
If you don't manage your cash flow, your people and they're not gonna get paid. There's so many issues that you've got to manage your cash flow and be responsible and conservative when it comes to these kind of things. Because I promise you, if you think something will take a month, it will take four. That's just the way it works. <clears throat> so to recap on those items, startups are fun. Startups are sexy. Startups are could be amazing, but they could be awful too. It's important that you balance these things. All right. And I know I've named a bunch of stuff so far, but let's do the most important thing here is why startups are exciting is you can change the world. Even if you're a small shop that's, that's fixing computers that, to a new area that has never done it before, or that coffee shop, or inventing a new cure for cancer, you're affecting downstream thousands of people. That person you serve, the coffee to, the computer that you fix, you make their life better. You make their, you know, their, their home, you know, whatever. I just can't even describe. You employ people. You make, you know, their stuff work, which makes their kids happy, which makes them a better parent. I mean, the downstream of everything you do in the startup world makes people's life better. Even if you're not Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or, uh, well, I don't know. Jeff Bezos is, yeah, we won't go there. Anyway, but startups are good because they can change the world at any factor just by interfacing with people, sharing your idea with people, doing things for people. It makes the world better. It, it has a ripple effect. You reach thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Startups can be exciting in just that sense. And I haven't even touched the could make you wealthy. It could do well for you. It has for a lot of people. Uh, there's no other freedom like having your own business. That kind of wraps up what we've got for the startup stuff. It's an exciting space. Anybody can do it. Don't feel like you can't. Is it like chewing glass? Some days. I, I, I've got the best meme which shows, you know, today things are awful. Today things are amazing. Oh my God, I'm going to rule the world. Today is an awful day and I want to go hide in a hole. You know, that's, that's owning a business period. But go out and chew some glass. And go out and start something, invent something, f you know, find something, found it. Um, startups, they are all what they are cracked up to. So again, thank you for watching. I'm going to do a lot more on startups and maybe kind of share what my day-to-day -day stuff looks like and, and some of the other stuff that goes on because there's a lot to a startup. People only see what's on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, and there's a lot more to it, good, bad, and ugly. And I think we should all share it. Uh, because most of the founders out there that I know personally don't share it and they feel very alone and generally somebody right next to them are experiencing the same things. So hello startup land and please if you like this again please comment because I want to have chats about this in, the, in the, the comment thing and yeah thank you please subscribe please like and have a great day.